So I'm sure y'all learned a lot from, from today's uh, speakers. So I sit in the basement of this in the acquisition building. So I learned a lot today too. I sit in the basement, so the bad news is no one comes to see me in the basement. And the good news is no one comes to see me in the basement so I can get some work done. But seriously, I did uh, learn quite a bit from, from the briefings. It's always a, a good event to figure out um, how the pieces connect, as Lisa Belt talked a lot about in her presentation. And uh, the program tables, that what I could see, were very busy and you had a lot of great dialogue from the people who actually buy and uh, manage the programs, which, which I think was great. Um, a couple uh, notes I wanted to make. Um, I was introducing individuals, and there was a Noreen, people that helped with put the event together and helped manage the media roundtable and some of the registration, was Noreen Castell and also Russ Gomez. When I did the announcements, I did not see them, um, but I wanted to recognize them, and also Gary Slegel from PSD also was instrumental in helping uh, with the support today. And then I forgot to, uh, when, I, when I was introducing people from the Ditko, and um, we had a lot of people, great people come out from Ditko Scott, and I have my list of people, and I actually talked to someone this morning and said, Carrie Ross, how are you doing? She said, I'm doing fine. So I get up here and do my list, and the one name I leave off is Carrie Ross, the one I spoke to right before I came up. But um, she does a great job. We, we have a lot of great people in this, and then we have some of our crown jewels, and Carrie has done a great job, so I apologize, but I wanted to, to recognize you if you met her at the table. Um, great. So um, we are going to do a survey, as we typically do, uh, for location, for logistics, the timing's kind of set given uh, given the time of year we need like to do this as opposed to the FCS symposium. But we'll put the survey out, um, we look forward to having your ideas, recommendations, and we'll um, just work to make the event uh, better. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. All right, it's pretty easy. Hey, I don't know what I've done these in the past if I um, have really provided what what PSD is and what we look like as an organization. So we have four operational locations. If you look at your chart on the top left, is, is the, the disability, which is kind of quote unquote where we are because we're nearby. The third picture is Ditko Pack. That's where we want to be, okay? Because they're on Fort Island. You could, I could throw a football and I could hit, hit Pearl Harbor. So we're at number one. We don't want to be at number three, but, but here we are. So across the chart, this is a chart I use when I want to get a snapshot of, of who we are as an organization. It has our business base. We, um, at $6.1 billion this year in obligations up about $100 million from last year. Uh, given the pace and given some of the, some of the budget issues we've had in the department, I actually kind of thought that was could be several hundred million dollars lower uh, for PSD, but it was not, which surprised me a little bit. But it's all good. So our competition goal is always hard to make. If I took away our top 10 contracts that are sole source because they're buying software, which you must buy, for example, certain maintenance or, or have certain platforms we much buy much per, must purchase certain service provider um, capabilities. If we took away the top 10 of those, we'd be like at 95 to 98% in competition. But it's just a hard one to make given we have some embedded softwares. Um, not that it's bad, but that's just how we operate as a department in the IT, IT realm. And Carlin, as always, um, you know, whenever I brief, I usually brief after small business. I'm like, oh God, Carlin's up there, she did a great job, and then there's me. But um, congratulations, Carlin, on your, your appointment. Um, disappointing to her about your, your team and where you're from, but, um, but we'll work on that. All right, so this chart also has our end strength at our four offices. And at the very bottom, it kind of gives a snapshot of full service. It's really a cradle to grave. Uniquely within the DITCOs, we actually do billion of customers in a working capital fund, customers meeting our internal department of defense and some um, external department of defense mission partners. So it really is a full spectrum operation, even much more full spectrum than a military department would, would operate under. Okay. All right, funding acquisition opportunities. So I did note that um, the, the event site has a 336 line uh, snapshot of forecast opportunities for the next 18 months. Um, it is, you see here, it has a website where it will be posted at. I have it posted out today. We'll do this again in May, about the time when they have the FCS symposium. So we have this time pretty well to link up um, to get you information that you need. All right, so I talked about the obligations, and for the top three um, elements there, we've been working with JSP, with POC, 3T, and the Army, and DCMA for a year, two, three years now. Um, so those are kind of stable as our external mission partners. Um, it was mentioned earlier about the mission partner engagement, uh, um, includes former MINIS program. So the program management has transferred, I believe it was trans this is one that transferred one October uh, to the Air Force, or at um, Andrews Air Force Base. So it has in fact transferred, 
But they have, in fact, contacted uh, myself and Chris Gray at the executive level to ask about contract support. So this much for that program, I can tell you. Um, for FY19, it will absolutely, absolutely be procured in the contracts administered by DISA and PSD. And I can pretty confidently tell you that will happen into 2020 and 2021, given just because of the dialogue we've had to date. My gut feel is that will be an enduring type of relationship of us providing contracting support. The program manager may be at the Air Force, but the contracting support right now is all going to be handled still out of uh, PSD. Okay, second is the uh, commercial satellite communication. So the mission transfers 12 December for FY19. Uh, for sure, all the acquisitions will be awarded and administered out of the DITCO, principally uh, DITCO Scott. Um, I foresee it will go into 2020, 2021, and I, I do kind of feel like it will be um, after that, that time frame. Okay. Um, this the inside industry. So we've had, we hosted one event last year when I spoke to you. I was hoping to have quite a few events. We've had them in, in a little bit smaller form than I that had hoped uh, for the organization energy behind it. We had one large event that went very well last fall. Uh, we did have um, Jerry Robbins provide an industry perspective, a DAU briefing he had. It was like an hour and a half long. Just you know, 1102's kind of folks, here's how we think about things in industry. And he gave the presentation, it was very, very well received. I'm still inclined as the comments I made last year, which was when you buy such diverse commodities, you buy satellite communication, you buy telecom, you buy IT services. If you're really providing uh, ComSatCom, you probably don't care to be in an industry forum sometimes or on the other parts of it. So I still am convinced that having niche um, uh, inside industry events where it's the satellite industry talking to us, where it's the telecom industry. Um, where maybe it's software vendors, hardware, if you sell one, you don't sell the other, you really want to get into your niche. And, and really what it becomes is, is this, a, this here's how you buy it. Have you ever thought about X would work better for you? And that, that's where we really try to learn and, and obtain the good ideas. So I'm still um, believe that in FY19, uh, we're gonna embark down that road. The other item is the DISA industry pre-award process feedback. So DHS has this reinvention lab. I'm not sure what name that they call it exactly, but I call it reinvention lab, which we had in the department back in the 90s when I first came along. So in, in this organization, they kind of think about what are the innovative new ways that they can, they can buy or engage with industry. So in that context, they had a um, reverse debriefing, which basically it's after, after um, the kind of awarded after the protests are, are done, et cetera. At that point, it's on that specific procurement, what went well and what didn't go well. You have to bid on it, and you have to come explain to us what you think may or may not have worked well. I think we would get get feedback regardless of being in a room with your competitors. I think it would still be productive. But even if it's not, um, I think we have to give it a chance. Um, there are several good ideas they've kind of DHS. I don't know why the Department of Defense doesn't think it needs to have a re-invention lab. So I've offered it to congressional staffers. I've offered it to my department leads. And I just get a, gee, that sounds really interesting. And gee, it sits on someone's desk. But I hope someone at some point for the Department of Defense will realize that reinvention labs are, are a good thing, especially in the age of um, innovation and refinement. Okay, um, I get asked a lot of questions. And I had, was asked some questions today about the use of DISA and non-DISA contracts. I had the same question last year, and I put up a chart that, that listed GSA, IT Schedule 70, and listed NASA soup, and I left out three or four contracts that we typically use. So I immediately I got questions, why don't you use this contract? I'm, I'm a primal there. I do my list that etc. So it was an example of contracts we use. So I won't give you a list this year, so don't have to call and ask. Um, we, we use the full spectrum of um, whether it be G the ones I listed, whether it be uh, NIH contracts, we use the full spectrum. Market research and RFIs inform the contract we decide to use. Okay? Market research and RFIs. So if you're not responding and we don't know, we're going to throw a dart at a dartboard sometimes. We'll get it right, but we give it perfect, maybe not. So we use any of these vehicles um, that we have are, are, are available to us. That being said, SETI, Encore, um, there's a METS contract we award, some of the GLA contracts we award. So if we awarded the contract, we are going to use it. We do not award a SETI, we don't award an Encore, we don't award JLAs to admire them on a shelf. We award the contract because it is something we need, has a demand signal from DISA, or from the department, and we will use those contracts. Will I say it's the first choice? No, I cannot. But I would tell you, we award those contracts to fill a niche in the department. 
Okay, if the other parts of the, part of the federal government can use them, there is external ordering for some of those, but we do intend to use internally the kind of tree award that are, that the, that are the GWAC or the IDA, IDIQ type of contracts. Uh, one other item that's, that's not listed on the bullet here because it was, it was late in the, the game when, um, when I realized this. So Office of Small Business for two years now in October has hosted a event on security. And it's personal security, it's facility security, and I think a couple other elements. And they have the DISA security office come in. But more importantly, have that the Defense Security Service, industrial security, personal security individuals come and they talk to the small businesses. And both times, both times I looked and I thought, man, everybody needs this. Because I, I read some of the things they talked about and I thought, I did not know that's what they did. And one of the Dateline articles we had, the one that Carlin just hosted. So um, what I want to do for, for this FY, and I'll engage very much with Carla and figure out how she did it, how she put it together, is we really need an event for, for the security. How does security work, like demystify security, for lack of a better word? We need those badly, because I think if you have a joint venture, if it's large businesses, we haven't really answered large businesses queries about how do you have a large venture, a joint venture that's large and small businesses. We've only touched the small business community. I read the information, and I don't get it sometimes. So if I don't get it and I'm exposed to it and have direct access to call someone, I'm sure folks, someone in this audience that is not a small business has asked the same question. So I'm kind of talking about it. We both thought it'd be kind of a good idea to, to lar make that category, that um, event larger. My gut feel would be an event held at the, the DISA Fort Meade campus because it's, it's free to me. I just need to get my bill to the room. The room is not this big, and I can guarantee you if when I go to do it, I can guarantee you I'm not going to be able to see everyone in there. And I don't know if we can, in that, kind of discussion. I'm not sure if I can get in a lot of discussion of security on, on a live stream as we do here or not, but um, but I think it'd be very, very helpful to have that. In the survey, um, if you if you agree with that, if you have comments on what to do, what to add, what not to add, let me know, because we have not done this, but just my intuition and Carlin's intuition tells me that um, it's something we definitely need to do for the betterment of, of all of us in the audience. Okay. Um, so a little bit more specific question. Someone someone asked, I want to address it because I think it's important to, to note them as why we do what we're doing today. So the question was asked about how do you decide between procuring something on SETI and procuring something on Encore 3? Well, it's a great question. We've addressed that in several different forums, but if I get the question again today, it, it means that the forum didn't address in everyone that needs some of that information. Um, we do have papers, we do have analysis, we have a thought process for buying commodity IT, and by systems engineering, technology, and innovative solutions, right? If you look at the task areas, that they're, they could be self-explanatory, but it's some, some individual that doesn't see it every day like I do, maybe it's not. So I'm thinking somewhere on that on the um, DITCO or DISA website is an explanation of what those vehicles are and what we'd intend to use those for, I think might be helpful. Another um, idea that the same individual told me, asked was, well, I'm a small business, and um, so I don't know what the opportunities are, but have you ever thought about having an Encore 3 matchmaking session? or SETI. And I said, you know, I haven't, but basically she just made my day because if I did nothing else today this entire event, we spent seven hours here, I now know that in Encore 3 matchmaking, bring in the, the large primes, bring them to room, explain what you do on a sheet of paper, what your sweet spot is on the task orders for Encore 3, what your sweet spot isn't, and who you want to team or partner with or joint venture with to, to propose on um, expected opportunities. We can, we can give a list of things we've had on Encore 2, and kind of have companies think about what they're able to provide. I think it'd be, and I've talked to Dustin about it, um, I think it'd be a great idea to, to bring them together. So that one thing, we probably just changed the dynamic of how to make that a much better playing field. So as you get those good ideas, we are not always going to figure them out in my office or in my organization. organization. So if you have the good ideas, please absolutely let us know what they are. Okay. For the opportunities, and these will be fairly quick. So the first is the NS2020 transition. Um, so we're, Narrowing in on releasing our first RFP, I think it's, I think it's any day, any week now, soon now. Christina's not quite sure, but she's not. And so soon we'll have our first um, department's um, cessation on the NS2020 transition. Um, before you ask whether or not GSA will extend the current contract, their answer has been if there's a need for it by the buying agency, uh, we will extend them. Um, there's been a lot more press about it. So as far as that question, whether they extend or not, I would tell you to ask the GSA current officer. I can speculate what I've heard, but it's not really my question to answer. So if you would touch base with them, if you have questions, they can certainly certainly clarify for you. All right, the DREN4 is a recompete, so it's the fourth edition of the Defense Research and Engineering Network, Network contract. 
high speed, high capacity, low latency nationwide um, computer network they use to perform their mission. RP should go out uh, this first quarter of FY19. All right, the Navy Enterprise Military Housing Technical Support System. Again, basically it's how they do the housing management program within, within the Navy, but it'll actually support the whole enterprise, the department, if so chosen. And it's Navy, Navy Installations Command is the uh, program owner. Okay, next for the, the Army uh, Program Executive Office I mentioned on, or was noted on a previous chart, is the C4ISR Engineering Integration Operation Maintenance Support Services. Um, again, it's, it's a Sunday Services technology, ser technology Support Services for the Program Office. And for that particular contract, we're gonna use Army R3 IDIQ as a small business set aside. So that that's, um, then have every company on there, but it's quite a, quite a few number of companies. So if you have that contract, contract holder rather, um, you should expect as a small business an opportunity to roll out here very shortly. All right, ignore that, it's a duplicate. The list chart. So the cloud, cloud, hmm, cloud migration services, for the U.S. Marine Corps uh, Program Management Office. Um, strategy is still TBD, but basically it's how to migrate application to commercial and private clouds, not unlike, I believe, uh, uh, Jason Martin talked earlier for a DISA project that we have ongoing. And the duplicate item was the maintenance of enterprise technologies and applications, basically data, database administration and maintenance for the Army National Guard Intelligence Center. And the last, I think the last four, the cutting kind of officer is Brenda Green. So Brenda Green isn't here because Brenda Green's very, very busy because she has a lot of, a lot of big things on her plate right now, but she does great work for us. Uh, the next item is the CTSS Southwest Asia, um, the fourth contract edition of those um, communication services recompete. Uh, the work will all be primarily in Southwest Asia as a, as a kind of combat support operations contract. And then the last two are DITCO NCR, and I, you, many of you probably met Chris Gray out at the program tables. So uh, we've been supporting uh, DCMA for about a year now. It's been an extremely successful partnership from a program management and a contract support um, perspective. Uh, it's worked very well. We have two here um, that are coming, up, coming out soon. One is the Cold Fusion application uh, web-based support for DCMA. And the second is uh, DCA's, DCMA's IT network um, this is the enterprise um, support for the enterprise for the WAN and then all the way down to the desktop for their DCMA locations. All right, so we'll take a few questions in a moment. So in, in, in kind of summarize what we've done, it's been seven hours. Uh, I've learned a lot in seven hours, so I'm sure a lot of folks in the audience have learned, um, learned a lot more. So in a trusted partnership, um, it's expected that it's a long journey. It's a marathon, it's absolutely not a sprint. It's a marathon will, that will long outlive um, and go past my time in the Federal Service. Um, but it is a partnership, it is a trusted partnership, and it's somewhat you don't feel like you have that. I think you owe it to myself, to the executives that spoke today, to program managers, to Admiral Norton, to Mr. DC. If you don't think it's a trusted partnership, I think you need to tell someone. I think you need to tell them verbally at an event like this by email or somehow channel that it's not the trusted partnership that you think you signed up for. Um, end of the day, um, no matter what we do, no matter what we supply, no matter who we supply it to, whether it be hardware, software, IT services, um, a boss kind of supports the DISA headquarters. It all does one thing, it all prepares someone to, to have lethality, to fight and win wars, and in that partnership, at the end of the day, is to, is to um, it's supporting the Constitution, and it's against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So it's insider threat, external threat, um, nation threat, um, quasi-nation threat. So when you sign up for that partnership, that's your sign up to do for the warfighter. And, and I would offer to you this, that warfighter, as I tell folks who work with all the time, and I just bought the little piece of hardware, or I bought some services. I know what you bought, but what you have to understand, as audience needs to understand too, is that what you provided, regardless of the dollar value, regardless of how long you spit on it, when yourself personally, the number of people you apply to it, that product, I can guarantee you have employed for at least total three years of my life, that product saved someone's life. That life is someone's mother, father, son, daughter, cousin, loved one, or friend. So if you want to continue the marathon journey, and I think we all do, that's what you sign up for. You sign up to make sure that it works for us, 
data in the app and you make sure you make sure that it works for the person in the in the foxhole, the person that's deployed, the person is really in harm's way. So given that, uh, Jim, I'll turn it over to you if you have any questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Packard, we do. What is the status of the DOD budget flowing down to DISA and MILDEPS? Is funding available at the PM level? If not, when? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that, that is, I think that is program by program specific. And um, some of the details I see, but most of them I don't. So if you have those kind of questions um, with Meet the Seniors, I'm sure my colleagues will tell you what their focus of the budget is. A satellite communications budget may be totally different than a software budget. But um, at the execution level, I think that they answer that much better than I can for you. Thank you. With all, I'm sorry, how is the platform services acquisition different from the current capacity services contracts? Ask it one more time. To ask it one more time, please. How is the platform How is the platform services acquisition different from the current capacity services contracts? I believe the platform services is JSP's platform services versus capacity services. You would have to ask the JSP. It's not something I have the detail on. That actual contract is a is being procured by WHS. Is being procured by NIH. So while I would typically see those when they're about in this stage stage of the um, solicitation, I have not because um, they're the supporting activity. Um, Ms. Hutchinson or uh, Major General Davis could certainly give you their perspective on the difference. With all of the with all of the opportunities seen from the directorates today, we see other contract vehicles, example uh, CIO SP3, IT Schedule 70, et cetera, being used, but not many, if any, opportunities projected for Encore 3. Is there a reason for this? Yes, there is, because Encore 3 was, was recently awarded, and it takes a bit of time for those opportunities to generate in, onto the vehicle. The other kind of vehicles have been there for a while. After there for a while, they just kind of there's a churn, natural churn to it. If you looked at Encore 2, and that was still the vehicle, you'd have a much different demand signal than what we would project on the charts. Can you help clarify the agency's approach to using SETI or Encore 3? What is the differentiation you look at when making a decision? Right. So um, as I mentioned during my, uh, during my presentation, so that was a great question some of the audience had when I spoke to them on a break. So we're going to lay out for you on the DITCO website, the DISA website, too, um, what, um, what we buy on each one. If I would tell you at this point, if you look at the task areas, the task areas, I think, are fairly well defined. Um, and look at Encore 3 as essentially buying commodity IT, with some exceptions, and, and SETI buying systems engineering, technology, and looking for innovation. But we can put a little bit more, make it a little bit more um, understandable for audiences, certainly doable. It was mentioned that the asset management contract will be released as a competitive 8A solicitation. Will you use the existing GSA 8A STARS 2 IDIQ vehicle for this JSP acquisition? has not been decided, I'm told, from the GSP officials. Does the data actually show that adequate performance follows from all the LPTA contracting you do? 70% of computing ecosystem, for example. Yes, it does. It also shows that when I pay a price premium for best value, I don't always get it either. So um, you could ar I could easily argue both sides of the coin. Um, but um, the short answer is yes, it does. Are there any updates you can provide on the SETI full and open protests and their remediation and how they may impact the SETI small business set-aside award? Yeah, no, I cannot. 